Hey, this is Artifacts of Mars, and I wanted to talk religion for just a few minutes. Uh, I stopped in a gas station, and some guy was telling me, was talking to the clerk and saying how uh, perfect Jesus was, and I kind of said, you know, you need to read your own book a little more thoroughly. Because the, uh, just for instance, the story of creation was, uh, the story of creation is actually about genetic uh, manipulation, alien contact, so forth. Okay. And he just smiled. He's an older guy. Um, now... But I wanted to make some points here about uh, God and religion. So let's get started. The first thing I always hear is always trust and obey God, right? Genesis 5.32 through 10 semicolon 1. The story of the Great Flood. Now here, we have a story where God nearly wiped out all of humanity. And I put it to... I'm sure other religions have these uh, similar tales how their God did this and so forth. I'm only thinking on Christianity is just the religion I know about. I'm not trying to be religion specific here. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, but I put it to you is this if God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, is this a God that we can really trust? I mean at some point in time you have to ask that question. Uh, is this really a God that can be trusted after he wiped out the entire population of the planet? Almost the entire population. According to myth, of course. Whether you believe it or not, it's another thing. Example number two. Uh, Genesis 19, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, I know, wicked cities and all this. He sends down fire from the sky and just burns everybody alive. Now, a guy that's all powerful should be able to work with people and say, alright, you don't have to change your ways, you don't have to straighten things out here. When suddenly sends on thunderbolts and blows people to hell. I'm going to ask the same question. Is this a God that you can trust? And if this is a God that you can trust, I want to know why you can trust. How does this translate into trust? This is what I'm asking. I have to ask the question, because in my book it doesn't translate into trust. If somebody cares to explain this to me, I'll, uh, let's see you try. Okay, example number three. Example number three, um, is the Great Tribulation. All sorts of plagues, war, disease, famine, whatnot, are sent down, and it wipes humanity off the face of our planet, and eventually the whole Earth is destroyed. I'm going to ask the same question. How does this translate into trust? I want that explained to me. Maybe somebody could do a video and, you know, take your best shot.
That's all I got to say. Take your best shot and explain to me how this makes for a trustworthy God, hypothetically speaking. I have to ask the question. I have to ask the question. Now, part two of this is, uh, you people, people who have religion, you say your God does so much, no matter who it is, all right, where is your God? I'm going to bring up a site. that uh, illustrates my point. This is called the Ugandan Water Project. The Ugandan Water Project is this thing where people are trying to bring water and hope to Ugandan people because These people live in abject poverty, as I'm sure most of you know. A worthwhile project, to say the least. But here's my question to uh, religious people of any faith Where is your God? I don't see any gods here, I see people helping people. And it's a worthwhile project. I mean, it's a good thing. But I don't see any gods here. I don't see any god going down to a Ugandan village, putting his or her finger down at the ground, and opening up a hole. You know, zap! There's your well. This pump will run for 500 years. Go ahead and use it. You don't see that now, do you? These are people helping people. How do I know about the Ugandan Water Project? Well, they have a local festival. And they're there every year. This is all I know about them. It's a worthwhile project. It's a good thing. But where is... Where are your gods? There's no God there digging a hole for these people to get water. There's no God sending down rain when they need it. Where are your gods? So I'm going to put it to the religious people here. Uh, if you know where your God is, by all means, give me his or her address. So I can go to that God and uh, check him out. It seems to me, I'm an agnostic, uh, I'm kind of flirting a little with aliens who really aren't, isn't a religious thing, per se. I'm an agnostic with some deist leanings. You see, deism believes that... There is a God, but that, that God basically created everything and then just left us to our own devices. I tend to think that we have interacted with advanced beings for a long time. I didn't say aliens per se, I said advanced beings. But anyway, this is my rant for today. Uh, you, there are other religions, so I'm sure that have this apocalyptic view. I know uh, what the Islam does, and probably a whole bunch of the rest of them. And God's at war in their heavens or whatever. That's very interesting. Have you ever thought the Christian Bible records war in heaven and then we live in 
linear time, but these beings aren't supposed to live in linear time. So have you ever considered maybe war in heaven could still be going on? Or was it an actual war, like in Ezekiel, where it says that uh, Lucifer got cast down to the earth, meaning he got exiled from some place? I said exiled. That's what the Bible says. It says he was cast down. That's my book that's exiled. All right, this is my rant for today. This is the Ugandan Water Project, and there's so many other things. But none of your gods are appearing, zapping holes, repairing roads. We're all doing it ourselves. And then you give your god the credit for it. I'm not getting this. I just don't get it. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Went longer than I wanted to. Thanks for watching.